showers and a thunderstorm. It'll be breezy with a high of 84. Saturday, intervals of clouds and sun with a passing shower. It'll be breezy with a high of 88. Sunday will be nice with periods of clouds and sunshine. Sunday's high 91. All day, every day, news, weather, and traffic on News Radio WFLA Orlando. I'm Drew Shannon. Need to manage a changing workforce? It's time to get to know Express Employment Professionals. Visit ExpressPros.com to find one of over 830 locations to help support your workforce needs. This hour on News Radio WFLA Orlando is brought to you by Lakota Safe Company. News Radio WFLA wants to help with a chance at $1,000. Text the nationwide keyword SMILE to 200-200. That's S-M-I-L-E to 200-200. You'll get a confirmation text and info. Standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. Beyond Reason Radio. Governor DeSantis is expecting to expand restaurant seating to his coronavirus reopening plan. This is all for my wedding. I know I'm being very selfish right now, but my wedding's at the end of June. And I need things to kind of start opening up here. Now, our honeymoon is supposed to be in Virginia. And the governor there is not getting the message. So, Jim, working out and losing 30 pounds before the uh, <laughs> wedding, huh? Is that what you're saying? Okay, gyms can stay closed. <laughs> but everything else, believe it or not, I work out at home. I, I have a... You push yourself of, away from the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> I lift the soda and I put down the soda. There you go. Governor Ron DeSantis, according to the Orlando Sentinel here, is expected to announce as early as Friday... The Florida gyms and fitness centers can reopen and indoor seating at restaurants could grow to 50% as part of his plan to restart the economy during the coronavirus pandemic. DeSantis' comments came Thursday at a South Florida news conference held to reveal that Miami-Dade and Broward counties would join the rest of the state in taking their first steps toward reopening. On May 4th, the governor signed an executive order allowing indoor restaurant dining at 25% capacity. But his South Florida order Thursday immediately allowed 50% capacity for restaurants. And his hand has said he would have a good announcement tomorrow about restaurants in the rest of the state. Asked about the potential of reopening gyms, DeSantis said it was important to him that people have access to them. He also downplayed the dangers and risk of infection for young people who would go to gyms despite warnings from health experts that they could infect others and the unknown dangers of the long-term effects of the virus. Um, He said, if you look in some of these jurisdictions, it's like 90 plus percent of the folks under 65 that have had fatalities have had serious conditions, and many of that has been tied to obesity. So let's tell people to get out and do these things. He's exactly right about that. I mean, as I've said before, I think history is going to remember this as the nursing home pandemic more than anything. Because when all is said and done here, which it might never be said and done, we're still dealing with the Spanish flu outbreak that happened in 1918. It's still something that's a part of our lives. So we're going to possibly be dealing with some part of this for a while. Obviously not as bad as it is now. But he's exactly right. So some good news. Yay! The crowd's going wild out there, Tom Benson, that things are going to start reopening. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I am your host, Michael Yaffe, the voice of reason in a world, once again, that is beyond reason. We are on until 8 p.m. tonight right here on News Radio WFL Orlando. We are on Facebook Live as well, and we got some people uh, – uh, watching me on Facebook, you can like the Beyond. No, they can't see you. Tom oh, I Benton. can't wave. No, so. no, you're just waving at me. You're I the star. You're the star. <laughs> I'm just a little guy pushing the buttons. Yeah, what can I say? Uh, this is exactly right. So you can like the Beyond Reason Radio Facebook page or send me a friend request. I'm Michael Yaffe. You can follow me on Twitter at Michael Yaffe as well. And uh, you heard the voice in there. Not so little, Mr. No, Tom Benson. no. Strange times that we live in these days, right? 
I mean, that's like the understatement of the day. Well, <laughs> just today, Mickey Mouse was spotted parking cars at Universal <laughs> City Walk. You hate the job, okay? Was he wearing a mask? That's the important of thing. Of course he was. <laughs> and Charles Schumer even weighed in on that. He said, wait a minute. He said, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we need to send Mickey Mouse these checks. Poor Mickey Mouse. Have you seen some of the aerial flyovers of Disney during the day when yeah, it's completely a little, empty? A little spooky, huh? It is really spooky. Good place to... Uh, Maybe film a haunted movie of sorts. It, ooh, hmm, that's interesting. How, how do they reopen? I mean, they're reopening City Walk right now, but mm -hmm. there's some checks. Like, they have to check your temperature wow. before you get in. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's going to be happening in more public places. There's just going to be one more thing they can check. Sure. And it won't stop everyone who has it from getting through, but at least it'll be something. They check your temperature, and they check your wallet. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Thank you very much, Charlie Schumer. <laughs> oh, we we need to uh, we need to save that cut and use it and make it a permanent thing on Beyond Reason Radio. So, um, Tom Benson, I could be like a dictator, like the dictator of uh, Michigan. Michigan. Yes, uh, Governor uh, Whitmer. She's a Democrat, right? <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but you know what? What should I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna be magnanimous. I'm gonna ask you, Tom Benson. Mm -hmm. What should we start with today? Because there's really two big topics. There's the coronavirus pandemic and the response. It's been a big topic for weeks, and it still is. It's still on everyone's minds because people are desperate to get out. And there's some different angles I have on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we have Obama Gate. What Ooh. should I What should I start with? I'm, I'm leaving it up to you. If this fails, it's all your fault, though. Let's go with, uh, <laughs> let's leave uh, Obamagate for later. Obamagate for later. So yeah. we're going to start with, uh, we're going to start with um, coronavirus. Okay, I want to, I, I, since we talked about Governor Whitmer, I can't believe that she gets away with a lot of this stuff. But I want to start with something she said on The View mm -hmm. this week. And it's just a tired old card, in my opinion. It's a tired old game that the left continues to play, and it's just, it's just annoying. It really is. So well, let's just play the cut. Here it is from Governor Whitmer of Michigan. Do you have that cut there? Go ahead and play it for me. This was your well, idea. I do think that the, the fact of the matter is Schumer is from Chuck, Chuck Schumer. Now, at first, he interrupts the beginning of this show. Now he's interrupting Governor Whitmer. How could she? I mean, come on there, Schumer. You'll get your turn. I know I threw things for a loop because I have it in a different order. We'll get, we'll get to Chuck Schumer in a little bit, but I did want to start with Whitmer because this, this really is beyond reason. Are you ready, Tom Vincent? Okay, go ahead. I do think that the the fact of the matter is these protests, um, it, you know, in a in a perverse way, make it likelier that we're going to have to stay in a stay home posture. The whole point of them, supposedly, is that they don't want to be doing that, and that's why I'm asking that everyone with a platform call on people to do the right thing. You know, they, these have been. Um, these have been really political rallies where people come with Confederate flags and Nazi oh, symbolism and, oh, and calling for violence. There this it is. is not uh, appropriate in a global pandemic, but it's certainly not an mm -hmm. exercise of, of democratic principles where we have free speech. This is calls to what? violence. This is uh, um, racist and misogynistic. And oh, I ask that is. everyone who has a platform uses it to call on people to observe the best practices promulgated by the CDC and to stop encouraging this behavior because it only makes it that much more precarious for us to try to re-engage our economy, which is what everyone says they want to do. Oh, so the protesters who are protesting lockdowns in michigan and i actually didn't agree with a lot of the protesters bringing guns or whatever but that wasn't the majority but they're racist and misogynist it's this tired old card they play and they play it again and again and again forget the fact that the one person 
who was holding a Nazi flag mm-hmm. at one of the protests and it went mm-hmm. viral. I remember. It was debunked. He was a Bernie Sanders supporter. <laughs> he was a Bernie Sanders supporter who was trying to make Trump look bad by throwing up the Nazi flag. He wasn't actually supporting Nazis. But they always play this game, and I, I think I read some of this before, but I want to read it again. It's by Rich Lowry from the National Review, and he's exactly right on this. He's exactly right. Here, he, re- he wrote this back in April because they were saying this at the protest back in April, and they're saying it again now. And you know what? Before I get to this, though, this was so unnecessary. The main reason the Michigan protests are happening is not because they want to do some social distancing and some shutdowns. They're happening because Governor Whitmer went too far. She just went too far. Why can't she admit that she just went too far? That maybe separating essential and non-essential items at Walmart and preventing you from buying certain items when you go into Walmart was stupid. Or other things, preventing landscapers from being able to do part of their job because it could spread the virus. Whatever. Just admit you went too far, and a lot of these protests wouldn't have happened. People are reasonable. People are willing to do some of the things that the CDC wants us to do, but they're not willing to do something just because you have this authoritarian streak and want to do it. But of course, if you disagree, uh, you're racist and misogynist and a Nazi or something. So Rich Lowry wrote in the National Review back in April, the old Confederate flag canard says the Michigan anti-lockdown protest was a sea of American flags. Mm. Of course it was. And most of them were in their cars. There were some that were not social distancing, but most of them were in their cars. Uh, He says here, it feels like a 2009 uh, repeat with spontaneous anti-government protests once again getting smeared. Says the line of attack is the familiar one of using a few isolated idiots or kooks to tar the entire enterprise. And they do this all the time. To this end, if there's one thing Democrats and the media want you to know about the anti-lockdown protest at the Michigan State Capitol in Lansing last week, this was early in April. It's saying Confederate flags. It says, um, you know, more broadly, any political protest will draw its share of nuts and fringe types. That's a couple of zealots displayed Confederate flags at this event involving as many as 4,000 people. Isn't the first, second, or third thing to know about the protests, which can be more accurately described as lavishly star-spangled. Because you can watch long stretches of footage of the protests and see only a panorama of American flags. People flying them from their cars, waving them, draping themselves in them, displaying them on their wheelchairs. Many of the protesters are decked out in red, white, and blue regalia. Hmm. The vast majority, of course they are. They're not a bunch of Confederates in Michigan. <laughs> I mean, come on. This is stupid. This is this long, either he links to a long form news report where you don't see any Confederate flags at all. A lot of the news reports I saw, no Confederate flags. There was Trump flags, but no Confederate flags. There was drone footage where you see stars and stripes and don't tread on me flags, not Confederate flags. And he, I mean, he goes over all these links in this article. This is all of this suggests that you could have spent hours at the protest and have seen no Confederate flags whatsoever but of course whitmer has to trash all these people you're just a bunch of confederates and nazis it's so dumb it says yet the confederate flag featured prominently in news coverage of course it did it says here uh fox news host defended anti-lockdown protesters con- carrying confederate flags and falsely accused michigan's governor of calling them nazis That was a headline by uh, Business Insider. But it said there was like barely any. The Michigan reporter noted photos of two more Confederate flags, one displayed on a green pickup truck, another a hybrid American, don't tread on me, which uh, Confederate flag. So there was like a couple there. 
but they made it seem like, oh, all these people are just racist, and it's a political rally. This rally would not have happened if the governor didn't go too far. People are reasonable. They want to social distance. They'll wear masks, but they also don't want to lose their livelihoods and be strangled into submission at something that probably won't affect them anyway. Now, Whitmer, though, about because she arrested a hair salon owner, I believe, for, you know, not following the guidelines, not following the executive order. She commented on that when asked about it, and here's what she said. First, I want to start by saying I know how frustrating this can be uh, and tough this can be for people across our state, people that are self-isolating, people that are um, doing all of the right things and contributed to these this decline that we've seen. Um, I also know a lot of people that could use a haircut. You know, yours truly included, as well as my husband, frankly. But what matters most here is that we are on a trajectory where we have saved lives, where the most crucial thing is that business owners have customers who will come to them and employees that think it's, no, it's safe to show up to work. What we need to do is continue what we have done. It's working. And for people that want to um, voice their frustration, that's fine. But I expect people to follow the law. These executive orders are not a suggestion. They're not optional. They're not helpful hints. Yeah. Since when can an executive, uh, executive of a government issue laws? I don't think it works that yeah, way. Yeah, why don't you go to the legislature? Yeah, I think that's the way it should work. Why, why, do you, why does she get all this power? But you can just hear it in her voice, Tom. You can just so hear it. These are not suggestions. I'm in control here. I know everything, and it's, it's for your own good. See? <laughs> you seeds at your Walmart? No! I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Lauren is commenting on the Facebook Live feed, and mm -hmm. she says, yep, met her a long time ago when uh, I lived up there, talking about the governor. Oh, yeah. With my ex-husband seven years ago. Says she's crazy. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, From one of our audience. But I mean... It's obvious that this was go just going too far. People are willing to do some social distancing. So uh, we'll continue this conversation in a moment. I'll actually give some facts, some much needed facts about uh, coronavirus in this country that will give some perspective. Plus, is Dr. Fauci a villain? <laughs> we'll go over. There he is right there. That's his voice. And we'll talk about Obamagate, the Flynn unmasking scandal this is beyond reason radio i am your host michael yaffe we'll be right back subscribe to the beyond reason podcast today on your stitcher app and hear the voice of reason anytime home is where the heart is but you can also get stuck there when your car won't start Ugh, i don't know about you but that sound makes me break out in a sweat but it doesn't have to as part of your AAA car battery service, one of our skilled technicians are always ready to test, diagnose, and handle your battery problem at home, at work, anywhere. And if you need a battery, they can install it on the spot. That's right. You don't have to shop around for hours or install it yourself. AAA provides you with the convenience of coming to you, wherever you are, a reliable and fast service when you need us most. Check out our website at AAA.com forward slash car battery service to get a quote or even sign up to be a AAA member. And remember, AAA battery service delivers and installs at home, at work, anywhere. It's easy. Call 877-731-3321 and you can speak to one of the team. We're here for you. Guys, waking up over and over to pee is not okay. You can reduce those nighttime bathroom trips with the ingredients in Super Beta Prostate P3 Advanced. You can try a full 30-day bottle free. Just pay shipping and handling. No strings attached, no obligations, and no commitments to buy. Call 1-800-387-9903. 1-800-387-9903. 1-800-387-9903.
This is a last chance alert. It's happening. Publishers Clearinghouse is ready to award $5,000 a week for life in just days. Enter now at pch.com and you could win $5,000 a week, week after week, for life. Don't miss this last chance to win $5,000 a week for life on June 30th. Enter at pch.com before it's too late. That's pch.com. Better hurry if you want the next big winner to be you. Enter now at pch.com. Entries due 625. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. If there's one thing that the class of 2020 has learned, it's to expect the unexpected. So to help them on their journey, iHeartRadio is launching Commencement, a new podcast featuring speeches from the biggest names. Commencement is in partnership with the 2020 Census, which gives you the opportunity to help shape the future of our country for the next 10 years. Complete the census at 2020census.gov. Then listen to iHeartRadio's new podcast, Commencement. Speeches drop May 15th on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. J. David Tax Law is here to help individuals and businesses during the coronavirus event. With a $2 trillion stimulus package, the IRS has never been tasked with collecting more. New programs are available to reduce or eliminate your IRS or sales tax debt that will expire on July 15, 2020. Call J. David Tax Law for a no-cost consultation at 407-603-3962. That's 407-603-3962 or at jdavidtaxlaw.com. Broadcasting from the Mills Air Studios. For all your AC needs, go to millsair.com to schedule an appointment. Your voice of truth in a world of fake news. The On Reason Radio continues right now. You know, right before the show, I was just looking at some different uh, websites here, and, you know, I I made the mistake of reading an opinion piece on CNN.com. I don't know what I was thinking. (laughs) It was on the left-hand side of the page, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. Um, But apparently this person is an expert in diseases, but I just don't understand it. It's by Yanir Bar-Yam. It says, don't let governors fool you about reopening. And talks about how we should all stay home. Until November 3rd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he says, based on the research I've conducted, I believe that if we take a more aggressive approach now and keep towns and cities locked down, we can defeat COVID-19 in four to six weeks. We've been locked down for two months. <laughs> And there's still cases. I don't, what's going to change in the next four weeks? Unless you want everything. And even if you do that, I, what I don't understand is when people like this, me, what prevents it from spreading when we lift after the lockdowns? Mm-hmm. What prevents it from spreading again? He doesn't give me an answer. And then, but this is the most beyond reason part here. He says, the correct way to relax restrictions is to start with parts of the state that are COVID-free for 14 days. COVID-free. So we went from trying to flatten the curve Mm -hmm. to being COVID-free for for two weeks? So if you have a county where there's two people that have it, you can't loosen things up. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to, and this is going to, but it all changed in a month. How are you just going to lock everyone in their homes where they can't even go to the grocery store? I don't understand. And then he says this at the end, which tells me he doesn't understand business at all. It says instead of opening up now, local business leaders can find ways to support their communities in preventing transmission and being safe. They're not going to have a business that doesn't help them make money. They have to have money to survive. It says directions will come around to help them when the community can open safely soon. Sure. They won't have a business when we reopen. It's already been two months and you want to do it for another six weeks. And we're told that magically in the next six weeks, it's all going to go away. Why didn't it go away in the last six weeks then? I just, I don't, I don't get it. And then of course there are all the horror stories about Georgia and Florida when they would start to reopen and cases would go up and everything. And it hasn't happened. They were projected, according to Yahoo News right here, actually it's from the National Review, uh, Georgia and Florida, which were projected to see a sharp rise in new cases, have not experienced major new outbreaks in the past week. 
The average number of new daily cases in Florida declined by 14% over the past week. And Georgia's average new daily cases dropped by 12% during the same time period. Oh. That's actually an analysis done by Axios. So what? I thought there was all doom and gloom if we start opening up. But this is, this is the real story here. This is why you haven't seen the doom and gloom in places like Georgia and Florida. According to the Daily Signal, 1% of counties are home to half of the COVID-19 cases and over half of the deaths. 1% of the counties in this country have over half of the cases and half of the deaths. Yet, they believe we should have national shutdowns. National responses. Everyone should stay home. This is ridiculous. But the good news is people aren't, fo- people aren't following this anymore. The, the re- there's a reason why the governors are starting to open. So we'll talk more about this. I want to go over more of this article next, and I do want to talk about Dr. Fauci next as well. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I am your host, Michael Yaffe. We'll be right back. If you like Beyond Reason Radio, well, make sure to show it by liking the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Radio. But you can also get stuck there when your car won't start. (sighs) I don't know about you, but that sound makes me break out in a sweat. But it doesn't have to. As part of your AAA car battery service, one of our skill technicians are always ready to test, diagnose, and handle your battery problem. At home, at work, anywhere. And if you need a battery, they can install it on the spot. That's right. You don't have to shop around for hours or install it yourself. AAA provides you with the convenience of coming to you, wherever you are, a reliable and fast service when you need us most. Check out our website at AAA.com forward slash car battery service to get a quote or even sign up to be a AAA member. And remember, AAA battery service delivers at home, at work, anywhere. It's easy. Call 877-731-3321 and you can speak to one of the team. We're here for you. Do you know someone struggling with mental health or opioid addiction? Join me, Andre Bailey, founder of Project Opioid, this Friday night at 7.30 p.m. as we discuss solutions to these critical issues right here on News Radio, WFLA Orlando. Guys, waking up over and over to pee is not okay. You can reduce those nighttime bathroom trips with the ingredients in Super Beta Prostate P3 Advanced. You can try a full 30-day bottle free. Just pay shipping and handling. No strings attached, no obligations, and no commitments to buy. Call 1-800-387-9903. 1-800-387-9903. 1-800-387-9903. Have you ever wanted to learn a new language like French, Spanish, or Russian, but thought it would be too difficult and time-consuming? Then go to Babbel.com and try it for free. Babbel works because it's built around real life. It teaches you everyday practical conversations that you will actually use. In 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. Babbel uses a modern conversation-based technique that makes language engaging, fun, and memorable. It starts by teaching you words and phrases. Then, sentences gradually get more complex. Soon, you're practicing short conversations about real-life topics. Babbel is created by language experts who use the space repetition method to help you learn quickly and remember what you learned. With Babbel, you can speak a new language. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel free. Just go to Babbel.com or download the Babbel app and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. WFLA and iHeartMedia Orlando want to help keep you informed as things start to open back up in Central Florida. Visit KeepOrlandoGoing.com and check out all the places that are now open where you can get takeout food, places to get your car serviced, dining deals, and other helpful info. You can also submit your business to be added to the directory and help spread the word. KeepOrlandoGoing.com, powered by Contender Claims Consultants. Check them out at ContenderClaims.com. safe space for conservative thought. 
not for political correctness. Yaffe is back right now. Yes, welcome back to the show, everyone. This is Beyond Reason Radio. Don't forget that if you miss any of the show, you can listen to the podcast on the iHeartRadio app. Just go to the podcast section and search for Beyond Reason Radio. And you can also like the Beyond Reason Radio Facebook page. We're on Facebook Live as well. I mean, I just keep seeing stuff that gives us so much perspective on this issue of the coronavirus. I mean, look at this out of the Wall Street Journal. New data suggests that coronavirus isn't as deadly as we thought. A study finds 50 to 85 times as many infections as known cases, meaning a far lower fatality rate. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't take it seriously. Doesn't mean there haven't been a lot of deaths because a lot of people have been infected. But that shows that a lot more people have been infected and been asymptomatic. I talked about not too long ago how when they tested people in the meat processing plant, some 200 people had it, all of them were asymptomatic. Amazing. It says the model assumed, the original models assumed that the fatality rate was 1% to 3%. The WHO thought it would be 3.4%. But new data supports the skeptics' view. A preliminary study by a Stanford team, uh, they conducted uh, a study of Santa Clara County, California on April 3rd and 4th, the study, a representative sample of 3,300 residents to test for the presence of antibodies in their blood that would show if they had previously been infected. It showed that uh, the percentage of infections was indeed vastly larger than the roughly 1,000 known positive cases in the county at the time of the study. It says that um, the preliminary results show that between 2.5% and 4.2% of county residents are estimated to have antibodies against the virus. And this was back in the beginning of April. That translates to uh, 48,000 to 81,000 infections, 50 to 85 times as high as the known number of cases. So it's not as deadly as they thought. That's good news, giving you some good news. But I talked about in the last segment as well, according to the Daily Signal, 1% of counties are home to half of the COVID-19 cases and over half the deaths. Is this 10 states accounted for almost 70% of all U.S. cases and nearly 75% of all deaths, but only 52% of the population. Together, New York and New Jersey alone count for 35% of all cases and 44% of all total COVID-19 deaths, the only 9% of the U.S. population. That goes back to what I was saying before weeks ago that the places where this thing really spreads and people are more affected by it, where they get worse symptoms and possibly die, is where there's a lot of people in smaller spaces. Like, hey, densely packed New York City because the viral load is so high and that's what causes the disease to be worse for people. And this is turning out to be true. More and more evidence I see all the time but you know i have a lot of people on my facebook and twitter and stuff who usually support me and they're probably not going to like what i'm going to say now but hey you know i'm just about not just about popularity but they keep telling me why fauci is so bad and evil and a deep stater that's a new one he's a deep stater He was friends with Bill Gates, and Bill Gates is just trying to make money off of this to get a vaccine. I have to admit, it's hard for me to be upset at Bill Gates for wanting to invest his money in creating a vaccine. I mean, why would I be upset at that? Of course, look at all the memes you see on the on on the internet about you know uh, Gates can't even keep viruses out of his computers. (laughs) This is a very good point. (laughs) That is hard to argue with. But, you know, there was an article, another one by Rich Lowry from the National Review. He actually wrote this in Politico, but he's an you know, editor of National Review. I tend to agree with his take on this when it comes to Dr. Fauci. There's something similar to what Rand Paul said earlier this week. He said, Fauci is not the villain. He said, though Fauci's every utterance is now examined with the same care as pronouncements of the Pope, <laughs> his words weren't exactly earth-shattering. 
It says, for his critics, Anthony Fauci cemented his status as the Rasputin of public health with the Senate testimony this week. He struck a different tone than President Trump. He's earning rebukes from show, talk show hosts and Fox News Inc., as well as fueling the outrage of the fire Fauci clack on Twitter. Uh, although Fauci's every utterance is now examined with the same careless pronouncements of the Pope, his words aren't exactly earth-shattering. He said if there are careless reopenings in the wrong conditions, we will start to see little spikes that might turn into outbreak. outbreaks. Does anyone doubt that's a possibility? Or that per Fauci, new uncontrolled outbreaks will not only lead to some suffering and death that could be avoided, but could even set you back on the road to trying to get economic recovery. No serious person would argue there are no hazards to opening back up or that it should be done heedlessly, only that some level of risk is worth taking to begin to ease the nation's economic calamity. Says Fauci is an important voice in this debate, if only one voice. He is neither the dastardly bureaucratic mastermind imposing his will on the country that his detractors on the right make him out to be, nor is he the philosopher king in waiting that his boosters on the left inflate him into. And this is exactly what I've seen. There's sort of a divide where the left and the media treat him as this sort of philosopher king god, an oracle of the virus that we must go to, we must go to the mountain and climb up and speak to Oracle Fauci. He knows more than that Trump man. Yeah. The orange man. But then the right say <laughs> he's doing all this on purpose to make money off of a vaccine or something and is in cahoots with Bill Gates or something. But I tend to agree with this. He's simply an epidemiologist, one who brings considerable expertise and experience. But at the end of the day, the focus is inevitably and rightly quite narrow. This is why it's tautology for Fauci's critics to say that he's focused on the disease above all considerations. This is like saying the Commerce Secretary is too consumed with finding business opportunities for American companies, or the head of the Joint Special Operations Command has an unhealthy obsession with killing terrorists. What else are they supposed to do? And he basically makes the point here that I agree with that the problem isn't really Fauci. Now, Fauci has been in the media a lot. And he's been wrong. He's had a lot of wrong predictions. If you listen to audio from him in January, he predicted that this wouldn't be a big deal. There was a time when he said you shouldn't wear masks. There was a time he said you should only focus on symptoms. I get all that. But instead of focusing on who, you know, oh, he's this evil villain. It's really the media that is the problem here because the media and the left and the Democrats are the ones who have propped him up as this oracle and who have said his word or nothing else, who have refused to debate all to get after President Trump. It's the reaction to Fauci that we should be focused on Instead of looking at him as one voice among many and having a reasonable debate over this stuff, it's them who say, you can't criticize Fauci at all. There was some MSNBC reporter who did that today. Blasted Fox News host for what they said about Fauci. Why, do they have an opinion about something? Maybe Fauci was actually wrong on some things? Maybe there are other opinions out there worth saying? That's the point here when it comes to Dr. Fauci. Stop trying to make him out to be this dastardly villain who's in control. He's really not. The one who's in control is Trump. And Trump needs to be the one to make the decisions here. And everyone says he has the guts to make the right decisions, even if people don't like it. Well, then he needs to have the guts to do that. He has in some cases, honestly. So that's just my take, my take on this. I've seen a lot of this, you know, bashing Bill Gates because they think he's just making money off of this or something and bashing Do Dr. Fauci. I just, I don't understand what this is helping here. It's just ruining the credibility of our side, frankly. So, but there is some distrust of people in government, which is understandable. And a lot of that comes from what happened in the Obama administration with the unmasking of a phone call between Michael Flynn and a Russian ambassador that now has turned into this big scandal, which Trump calls Obamagate. 
and I have to talk about this next and much more. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I am your host, Michael Yeffe. We'll be right back. Download the iHeartRadio app and catch the Beyond Reason Radio podcast. When it comes to diamond education, at International Diamond Center, we go way beyond the four C's. We reveal the long-held secrets of the diamond industry. At IDC, we're going to teach you to buy like a dealer buys. We're going to protect you, we're going to back you up, and we're going to make it with no risk. That's owner Keith LeClaire, who says, unlike other jewelers, IDC doesn't mark up prices just so they can mark them down and give the appearance of a big discount. A lot of jewelers are out there trying to trick you, or they're trying to manipulate, make you feel like you got a deal. I think it's an insult today to play those kind of pricing games. At IDC, we're all about integrity, transparency, and bottom line pricing. No games, no false pretense, no misinformation. We price it straight and you win. Best prices, highest quality, largest selection, and a no-nonsense diamond education. Don't make a big financial mistake and buy from another jeweler before you shop us. That's International Diamond Center. Orlando's direct diamond importer with four convenient locations. Online, shopidc.com. Have you been lied to, lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine? Hi, I'm Inc. Magazine bestselling author Brett Kitchen. And if you're 55 with an IRA or 401k, I want to give you a free copy of my new book, Wealth Beyond Wall Street, because according to Time Magazine, Wall Street's 401ks have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I discovered a way to grow money, potential double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crash hits. When the next market crash hits, you lose nothing. Call Wealth Beyond Wall Street now to get your free book and talk to a specialist to discover this little known strategy to get potential double digit growth during good years and never lose in the next market crash. Call 800 704 5353 to discover this asset that people like Walt Disney and JCPenney use to grow wealthy. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. Call 800 704 5353. That's 1 800 704 5353. 800 704 5353. This is a last chance alert. It's happening. Publishers Clearinghouse is ready to award $5,000 a week for life in just days. Enter now at pch.com and you could win $5,000 a week, week after week, for life. Don't miss this last chance to win $5,000 a week for life on June 30th. Enter at pch.com before it's too late. That's pch.com. Better hurry if you want the next big winner to be you. Enter now at pch.com. Entries due 625. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Guys, waking up over and over to pee is not okay. You can reduce those nighttime bathroom trips with the ingredients in Super Beta Prostate P3 Advanced. You can try a full 30-day bottle free. Just pay shipping and handling. No strings attached, no obligations, and no commitments to buy. Call 1-800-387-9903. 1-800-387-9903. 1-800-387-9903. Complete coronavirus coverage every hour. News Radio WFLA, Orlando. The place where we talk faith, culture, and politics. Beyond Reason Radio continues. Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I am your host, Michael Yaffe. The long-haired Yaffe, because I still haven't been able to get haircuts. I'm going to try somehow to get to one this weekend, maybe, because you have to make an appointment. So I looked at one haircut place that's around, and Mm -hmm. you don't have to make an appointment, but you can reserve a seat. Ah. You know how long the wait was? Said estimated wait time, 437 minutes. (laughs) Uh, uh, that's longer than waiting in line at Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, hopefully this will calm down in the next couple of weeks. But we have to talk about the other big story today that, you know, I've noticed that those in the left are actually talking about this now. Mm. They're realizing they can't ignore it, but of course they're spinning it mm-hmm. in a way to just bash Trump and bash people who want to cover it and all that stuff. But they're, they're having to cover it. But they're just saying, oh, it's not a big deal. Obama was wonderful. This is Obamagate, where uh, they uh, spied on Michael Flynn. uh, And when he was in the Trump, before Trump was inaugurated, talking to the Russian ambassador, they unmasked his name. A lot of people were involved in this, and then they leaked it to the press to make 
it looked like Trump was colluding with the Russians. And of course, I don't know why I'm talking about this because Senator Chuck Schumer says, no, you're, this is just conspiracy theory. I played this yesterday. I want to play it again because I want to make another point on it. Here it is. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. He has been very restrained. And I want to say this, Andrea, instead of doing what they're supposed to do, Senate Republicans, coming up with answers to the COVID crisis, having oversight hearings to find out why small business isn't getting the lending, why we're not testing, why the hospitals are still hurting uh, and are not getting money that they need. Instead of having hearings and oversight on that, they're coming up with these ridiculous conspiracy theories on Obama and uh, Chairman Johnson wants to uh, go uh, after Biden and this Hunter uh, Biden um, conspiracy theory, which came from the Russians of all people. This is amazing to me. What alternative universe do they live in? Spending their time on discredited conspiracy theories against Obama, against Biden, instead of dealing with the greatest crisis crisis we've had in America in decades and decades and decades. One point that I found amazing is he discredited one of the theories because the source was the Russians. You know who the Russians were also the source for? The Steele dossier. The Steele dossier that the Democrats constantly used to go after Trump and the Russia collusion stuff that went all the way eventually to impeachment. So now all of a sudden they care about the sources being Russian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, uh, he, he did an interview today on CNN, and he made a point that to me is kind of disturbing. It shows that there's a bigger problem here. Here's what he said. It's a routine thing. It's appropriate and legitimate. Uh, when you have a valid foreign intelligence target engaging with a U.S. person, is it, for example, an insider, someone in the government engaging with that foreign adversary? So it's important from the standpoint of potential jeopardy to national security that you know you understand what's going on. So he says all this uh, spying and unmasking is, it's normal. It's routine. We do this all the time. We got to know what's going on. Yeah, I mean... He talked about a foreign agent or whatever, but Russia. So every time that someone in our government speaks with a, a Russian diplomat, somebody has to spy on this. And then we have to unmask the American that was talking to them every time. I feel like, and I've said this before, I feel like there's just too much spying going on in general. And I think this isn't just an Obama administration thing. It's still happening. Now, unmasking still happens a lot under the Trump administration. It really started with President Bush. Is anyone else concerned about this? You know, the scary part is this is something we know about. Just think of all the spying that's going on that we don't know about. Exactly. I just, it's, I don't like this. I feel like it's way too easy to spy on Americans who are having legitimate conversations. And it can be abused, which we're finding it was abused here, because the FBI used this to go after Flynn, which they really didn't want to go after Flynn. They wanted to use Flynn to get to Trump. That's where the abuse is. Of course, Clapper then admits something that's very interesting here, even though Adam Schiff apparently didn't get the message. Here's what he said. Did you see any direct evidence of collusion between General Flynn or any Trump campaign official with the Russians? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, uh, of course, collusion is not a, a formally defined term, certainly in, in a legal sense. But if you, if you read the intelligence community assessment, particularly the highly classified version, and as well as the unclassified version, you won't find the C word anywhere in that report. Very interesting. No, I did not. So why were we focused on it for like two, three years? Three years. <laughs> See, the unmasking, maybe it is routine. It shouldn't be that routine. But what's not routine is then leaking the unmasking and all of this reports to the press. Why were they doing that? I think this was all about just trying to confirm their bias. These people believed that Trump was guilty of something like this, even though he admits they didn't have any evidence of it. So they were willing to do whatever it took to try to prove what they already 
thought was the answer. And they thought they could just by putting it out there in the press, which obviously made Trump look bad. Now, how is this not a story? If this were Trump doing this, the, all these people saying this is a non-issue would be talking about it nonstop every day. And if Republicans said, oh, we should be focused on more important things, which is what they did say during the impeachment hearing, oh, they wouldn't care. No, not at all. We can do both. But a good voice of reason on all of this, once again, is Senator Rand Paul. He spoke in front of the Senate because he agrees that with me that all this spying is just too much. Here's what he said. The Patriot Act was begotten of the most unpatriotic of ideas, that liberty can be exchanged for security. The history of the Patriot Act shows that the exchange is a poor one. As our liberty wanes and wastes away, we find that the promises of security were an illusion. The history of the Patriot Act is really a history of how power corrupts and how bias and malfeasance grow when power is unchecked. The Patriot Act allows a secret court, FISA, to grant generalized warrants to collect personal data from millions of Americans. Yeah, exactly. And millions of Americans don't even know what's going on. But you know what's really telling about that comment there when I was thinking about that? It's not only true of the Patriot Act, the FISA stuff, the spying. It's also true of the coronavirus thing. I don't, think, I don't even know if Rand Paul really realized that when he was saying, but we're doing the same thing now because of a virus. We've decided that we're willing to trade in our liberty for a form of security. Now we call it safety, but it's the same thing, security. That's why Governor Whitmer is out there believing that her executive orders, even though they're way too draconian, he says, oh, they're based on science, and this is all for your good. It's all for your security. What about our liberty? What about our freedom? What about our rights? We know what's best for you. Exactly. That's what all authoritarians say when they abuse their power. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be concerned and shouldn't have some safety measures, but it should be done reluctantly. It should be done as a very last resort, and it should be done within reason. And yet these Democrat governors, a lot of them, some Republicans too, honestly, they are abusing this because they think their main job is not to protect the Constitution, not to protect our rights, not to protect freedom, but to take care of you, to be like your parents. And this is how freedom dies. And I know some people say, oh, you're just talking about a haircut. But I'm not talking just about a haircut. I'm talking about people who run these businesses, who put their livelihoods into these businesses that are now going out of business and their lives are being destroyed, their liberty is being taken away, their private property is being taken away and abused, their rights are being abused. Where does this lead? And we're willing to do this all because of safety and its security. And a lot of it's not being done within reason. I appreciate you listening to the show today. We got a lot done. If you miss any of the show, you can catch podcast anywhere podcasts are available. You can also follow me on Twitter at Michael Yaffe. Always great stuff we do for Beyond Reason Radio. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. If you get to go get a haircut, uh, let me know where you got it so I can go. And I'll get you guys next time. Hey, it's Melissa.